May 26. Solomon's Officials and Governors King Solomon now ruled over all Israel, and these were his high officials. Azariah, son of Zadok, was the priest. Elohoref and Ahijah, the sons of Shisha, were court secretaries. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, was the royal historian. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was commander of the army. Zadok and Abiathar were priests. Azariah, son of Nathan, was in charge of the district governors. Zabud, son of Nathan, a priest, was a trusted advisor to the king. Ahishar was manager of the palace property. Adoniram, son of Abda, was in charge of the labor force. Solomon also had twelve district governors who were over all Israel. They were responsible for providing food for the king's household. Each of them arranged provisions for one month of the year. These are the names of the twelve governors. Ben-Hur in the hill country of Ephraim. Ben-Decker in Mekes, Shealbam, Beth Shemesh, and Elon Beth Hanan. Ben-Hezid in Araboth, including Soko and all the land of Hefer. Ben Abinadab in all of Naphoth Dor. He was married to Tephath, one of Solomon's daughters. Beena, son of Ahilud in Teanach and Megiddo, all of Bethshan near Zerathan below Jezreel, and all the territory from Bethshan to Abel Mahilo and over to Jachmium. Ben Geber in Ramoth Gilead, including the towns of Jair, named for Jair of the tribe of Manasseh, in Gilead, and in the Argob region of Bashan, including sixty large fortified towns with bronze bars on their gates. Ahinadab, son of Ido, in Maenaim. Ahimeaz in Naphtali, he was married to Basmuth, another of Solomon's daughters. Baena, son of Hushai, in Asher, and in Eloth. Jehoshaphat, son of Perua, in Issachar. Shimei, son of Elah, in Benjamin. Geber, son of Uri, in the land of Gilead, including the territories of King Sihon of the Amorites and King Og of Bashan. There was also one governor over the land of Judah. Solomon's Prosperity and Wisdom The people of Judah and Israel were as numerous as the sand on the seashore. They were very contented, with plenty to eat and drink. Solomon ruled over all the kingdoms from the Euphrates River in the north to the land of the Philistines and the border of Egypt in the south. The conquered peoples of those lands sent tribute money to Solomon and continued to serve him throughout his lifetime. The daily food requirements for Solomon's palace were 150 bushels of choice flour and 300 bushels of meal. Also, 10 oxen from the fattening pens, 20 pasture-fed cattle, 100 sheep or goats, as well as deer, gazelles, roe deer, and choice poultry. Solomon's dominion extended over all the kingdoms west of the Euphrates River from Tifsa to Gaza, and there was peace on all his borders. During the lifetime of Solomon, all of Judah and Israel lived in peace and safety. And from Dan in the north to Beersheba in the south, each family had its own home and garden. Solomon had 4,000 stalls for his chariot horses, and he had 12,000 horses. The district governors faithfully provided food for King Solomon and his court. Each made sure nothing was lacking during the month assigned to him. They also brought the necessary barley and straw for the royal horses in the stables. God gave Solomon very great wisdom and understanding, and knowledge as vast as the sands of the seashore. In fact, his wisdom exceeded that of all the wise men of the east and the wise men of Egypt. He was wiser than anyone else, including Ethan the Ezraite and the sons of Mahal, Heman, Kalkal, and Darda. His fame spread throughout all the surrounding nations. He composed some 3,000 proverbs and wrote 1,005 songs. He could speak with authority about all kinds of plants, from the great cedar of Lebanon to the tiny hyssop that grows from cracks in a wall. He could also speak about animals, birds, small creatures, and fish. And kings from every nation sent their ambassadors to listen to the wisdom of Solomon. Psalm 72 Give your love of justice to the king, O God, and righteousness to the king's son. Help him judge your people in the right way. Let the poor always be treated fairly. May the mountains yield prosperity for all, and may the hills be fruitful. Help him to defend the poor, to rescue the children of the needy, and to crush their oppressors.
May they fear you as long as the sun shines, as long as the moon remains in the sky, yes, forever. May the king's rule be refreshing, like spring rain on freshly cut grass, like the showers that water the earth. May all the godly flourish during his reign. May there be abundant prosperity until the moon is no more. May he reign from sea to sea and from the Euphrates River to the ends of the earth. Desert nomads will bow before him. His enemies will fall before him in the dust. The western kings of Tarshish and other distant lands will bring him tribute. The eastern kings of Sheba and Seba will bring him gifts. All kings will bow before him, and all nations will serve him. He will rescue the poor when they cry to him. He will help the oppressed, who have no one to defend them. He feels pity for the weak and the needy, and he will rescue them. He will redeem them from oppression and violence, for their lives are precious to him. Long live the king. May the gold of Sheba be given to him. May the people always pray for him and bless him all day long. May there be abundant grain throughout the land, flourishing even on the hilltops. May the fruit trees flourish like the trees of Lebanon. And may the people thrive like grass in a field. May the king's name endure forever. May it continue as long as the sun shines. May all nations be blessed through him and bring him praise. Praise the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does such wonderful things. Praise his glorious name forever. Let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. This ends the prayers of David, son of Jesse. Psalm 127 Unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with sentries will do no good. It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved ones. Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hands. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them! He will not be put to shame when he confronts his accusers at the city gates.